Welcome to the world of Wistoria, Wand, and Sword, where magic rules, but not everyone's got the talent. Our hero, Will Surfer, is a top student who knows everything about magic, except how to use it. It's like knowing all the dance moves, but having two left feet. But hey, Will's determined to become a magic vander, one of the most powerful wizards, even if he can't throw a single spell. So how does a magicless guy plan to survive in the world of wizards? Stick around to find out as we dive into Season 1. The story kicks off with Will in his final year of Riggerton Magical Academy. Now, Will's got brains, top of the class even. But when it comes to actually using magic, let's just say he's a useful he's as useful as a waterproof towel. Professor Edward Serafence, the guy with a superiority complex bigger than the Academy itself, calls him out to cast a spell in front of everyone. And surprise, surprise, Will fails spectacularly. Edward's all about reminding everyone that magic is the be-all, end-all. His lesson, if you can't use magic, you're basically invisible. Ouch, Will stands there, wishing he could sink into the floor. But he's not about to give up. Nope, not our boy. After class, Will runs into Scion Ulster, rich, arrogant, and with an ego that could probably float a ship. Scion decides it's the perfect time to remind Will that he'll never be a magic vander. It's like getting kicked while you're already down. But before things get worse, in comes Will's friend, Colette Lawyer. She steps in, telling Scion to back off. Colette's not just all talk, she's got Will's back, and in this world of power plays, that's huge. But what really drives Will isn't some petty argument with Scion. It's a promise he made in his, to his childhood friend, Alfaria, and not just any friend, mind you. Alfaria is the youngest magical bander in history. She's a magical prodigy, and the reason Will's so set on staying in the academy despite everything, magic or no magic, Will's determined to stand alongside her one day. Now here's where things get tricky. Will's in his final year, but he's missing four spell work credits. Problem is, he can't cast a spell to save his life. His advisor, Professor Workner, sits him down and says, Look, graduating without magic credits is like trying to pass gym class without showing up. It's not going to happen. And Will, he's got two days to fix that problem. So, what's his plan? Oh, just a little dungeon dive. Will decides to head to the sixth floor of the dungeon, aiming to take down a Baskerville a monster worth just enough credits to save him from expulsion. But guess who overhears his plan? Yup, Scion. And in classic rival fashion, Scion decides to beat Will to the punch, hoping to kick him out of school for good. Only problem, Scion bites off more than he can chew when he runs into a Sentinel, a monster way out of his league. Just as Scion's about to be toast, Will shows up. Now, even though he can't use magic, Will's swordsmanship is no joke. He takes down the Sentinel like it's nothing, earning 10 credits and securing his spot in the school. And Scion, well, let's just say, that didn't help his mood. Will's victory in the dungeon gets him some attention, but not all of it is good. Edward Seraphence still wants Will out of the academy. He, con he convinces the headmaster Caldron to let Will stay on one condition. He has to pass a special test. And this test land a single hit on Edward. Easy, right? Except there's one catch. Will's not allowed to use his sword. Without his sword, Will's in trouble. He's dodging Edward's spells left and right. But things are looking grim. It's like trying to win a boxing match with your hands tied behind your back. But then, in a clutch move, Colette sneaks in and delivers Will's sword, and the tide turns. With his sword in hand, Will cuts through Edward's magic like a hot knife through butter, lands a hit, and passes the test. Edward's left with a bruised face and an ego. Next up, we've got the Grand Magic Festival, an event that brings out the best and the worst of the Academy. Will's planning to skip it. After an embarrassing performance his second year, but fate has other plans. While he and Colette are at their lockers, they stumble upon a secret patches that leads to an underground gambling ring where students are betting on the festival's outcomes. And just when you think Will can't afford the spotlight, 
he gets pulled into the event itself thanks to pressure from some top tier students. The first big event of the festival, the crown attack, is a, it's a race to navigate traps, battle other students, and grab the crown at the end. Will's teams up with Colette, and you guessed it, Scion. Their teamwork is, let's call it a work in progress. Will's sword skills help them push through, but Scion's holding a grudge, and it's not long before he turns on Will mid-event, demanding a duel. Scion's throwing spells at Will, but our boy's not biting. Will's too smart to get dragged into a pointless fight in the middle of a competition. Instead, he focuses on the bigger picture. Colette's out there holding off enemies while Scion's busy having a meltdown. But things take a turn when Julius Reinberg, one of the top students, decides to make things personal. Julius, the golden boy of the academy, is not happy with Will's rise. He's got ice magic that could freeze an ocean, and he's ready to show Will who's boss. But Will's no stranger to Alfira's magic, having grown up with her. So when Julius tries to overwhelm him with a barrage of icy attacks, Will counters with precise sword strikes cutting through Julius's illusions like a pro. But just as Will's about to land the final blow, they realize they've been so busy fighting, they lost the event to Wignall's team. Oops. After that whole fiasco, Julius begrudgingly admits that Will's no pushover. It's not a friendship, but hey, it's a start. And as, as for Will, he's just glad he didn't get frozen solid in front of the whole academy. After the festival, Will, Will's invited to join an elite party for the all student praxis, a massive dungeon dive where students can earn a boatload of credits. Will's teamed up with some of the academy's best, Julius, Scion, Liana, a student who's got her own reasons for wanting to become a magic vander. Together, they're heading down to the dungeon's deepest floors. It's a high risk, high reward mission, and things get real when they hit the 10th floor. Just when they think they've got things under control, they're ambushed by a monster so strong it shatters the ground beneath them, sending the whole party plummeting to the 11th floor, a place where only high level mages should be. And to make things worse, the party gets split up in the fall. Will ends up with Wignall, an elf with a major inferiority complex. His magic isn't as flashy or powerful as the other elves. He's been feeling like dead weight in the group, but Will's not about to let him give up. They face off against monsters immune to most attacks, and with Will's encouragement, Wignall steps up, giving his illusions physical form and defeating their enemies. It's a big moment for both of them. Two no talents proving their worth. But the real test comes when the party reunites to face the evil Grand Duke, a 270 credit monster with enough power to level the entire floor. Will knows they're outmatched, but he's got one last trick up his sleeve. Remember that secret power called Wiss? Will uses it to absorb magic into his sword, turning his biggest weakness into his greatest strength. With a single charge strike, Will takes down the evil Grand Duke. It's the kind of moment that makes you want to cheer or at least fist pump from your at least fist pump from your couch. But it's not over yet. Just as they think they're safe, more monsters show up, and Will's party is too exhausted to fight. Luckily, the Magic Vander, Era, arrives just in time to save the day with an annihilation spell that wipes out the remaining threats. After all the chaos, Will's left with a lot to think about. He's come a long way from being the kid who couldn't cast a single spell, but the journey's far from over. With new enemies, old rivalries, and the shadow of the magic vander looming over him, Will's got plenty more challenges ahead. But one thing's for sure, whether he's using magic or a sword, Will's not backing down anytime soon. And that's it for Season 1 of Wistoria, Wand and Sword. Thanks for joining us on this magical sword swinging adventure. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more anime recaps. Until next time, keep swinging that sword because in a world of magic, sometimes a sharp blade is all you need.